To me, sustainability means living in a way that acknowledges that we're part of the earth and not separate from it, and so that how we treat our ecosystem is also reflective of how we treat ourselves and one another. Like building our backyard garden was for me the first time where I felt like I saw a problem and I didn't have a lot of power, but I was like, I can build a garden and you know, then we can sort of offset the carbon footprint of some of where we get our food. And I think that moment when I could look at something tangible that I'd produced, that sort of triggered in me this realization that like there's a lot of sustainable work that's so simple and easy to do. And so I think it's important to start to show people so that they can see that sustainability can have many expressions and many manifestations. I was part of E.ON, the Environmental Organizers Network, and we had something called the Green Scene, which was sort of this weekly newsletter we would send out to all of the students on campus about green stuff that was going on in the environmental community at Wesleyan. And it got really poor readership. I think something like two people would open it a week. And on a community of like 3,000, that's huge. I saw just a need for more outlets for people to connect to the environment and more creative outlets in a way that I hoped would appeal to people who didn't just identify as members of the environmental community at Wesleyan. I started to think about how there's something like about holding a beautiful tactile like magazine and how wonderful it was to have a tangible expression. And so I figured Loam would be a good way to kind of show all this great stuff that was going on but have to do with a much more like nuanced vision of how to live a sustainable lifestyle. At Wesley and Loam had about 20 contributors and then we had a bunch of different photographers and writers and poets who contributed content and we were able to connect with so many people through it. And I wanted to create Wild Walls to kind of work in tandem with that so people could read about these activist ideas and green philosophies that were being circulated on our campus in Loam and then be able to put that into practice with participating in the creation and maintenance of Wild Walls. A lot of the times when we go out and there's a garden, like we can't really touch it. It's sort of something we look at and admire and it's beautiful, but we're not necessarily invited to like take a fruit from the tree or enjoy it. I really want to create this beautiful like interactive space. The first wall we built was just made out of pallets and they were succulents and that was our pilot garden. And the cool thing was that once we built our first wild wall, we started to notice that people were building their own little vertical gardens in their backyard. Like sometimes I'll be walking and then all of a sudden I'll see like a vertical garden come out of nowhere and I'm like, Kate, hey like totally did that or made that happen. I never would have thought to see or view my life in a way where I could like take more steps towards becoming like a sustainable person. But like Kate's ideas that sort of just seem to like pop up around Wesley and are friendly little reminders. And so I think part of it is just connecting people to new sources of information and making them feel empowered to make choices that don't have to do with like the right or the wrong way to be. For a long time I thought you have to be driven by negativity, like by fear and anxiety. And it's been really amazing to see people who are like, no, like there's a lot of great stuff going on and we're gonna focus on that and grow that. And that to me has been like one of the best byproducts of doing Loam.